recommence the uh, public hearing and now welcome from Queensland Council of Civil Liberties, Mr. Michael Cope, President. Uh, good afternoon and thank right, you for being here. Thank you for your submission. Um, would you like to make an opening statement uh, before we go to questions? Okay. Yes, on behalf of the Council, I thank the, the, the committee for the opportunity to appear before it today. The Council's position is that the COVID emergency that justified some emergency powers being given to the Chief Officer is over. These powers need to be ended before they become permanent. This position is based on three propositions. One, COVID virus is now circulating widely in the community. Two, we now have highly effective vaccines and treatment. Three, the government refuses to give any indication as to when the COVID emergency powers will cease to be needed. The virus is going to continue to circulate in the community forever, so far as we know. We cannot see how the current situation is going to be any different in 12 months' time. Our position is that taken by a number of European countries, serious European countries, as well as by a number of states in the United States, including places like Hawaii, which is controlled by the Democrats. I have just come back from spending a week in Cyprus, where there was a mandate requiring the wearing of masks in indoor public places. In my whole time there, I counted less than 20 people complying with that rule. Whilst I expect that Queenslanders, like all Australians, despite their self-image as anti-authoritarian, will be more likely to comply with this rule than the Cypriots, I expect that a lot of people will not comply with this rule. What is the government going to do? Is it going to deploy the police to prosecute people en masse or to allow the law to be made look like a fool? Apart from that, I wish to make a couple of additional specific comments. Firstly, a point that should have been made in the submission, which is that we do not support sections 140 capital N and 142 capital O. Why should health inspectors be able to enter premises without a warrant? to deal with this virus which is circulating everywhere. In addition, we endorse the comments of the Human Rights Commission on those provisions. Finally, in relation to corrective service provisions, we endorse the comments of the Prisoners' Legal Service. Thank you, uh, Mr Cope. Do you see aspects of this bill being um, winding back of broader powers like border closures as a good oh, thing? Look, as the submission says, I mean, there are vast improvements over this bill over the enormously wide powers that the Chief Officer had. Um, but, you know, as we've said on a number of occasions, our c concern is that these powers, that all emergency powers should come to an end as soon as possible. And I still don't understand what is the criteria by which the government will say no more powers are needed? It's not advanced anywhere that I can see. So you have to get concerned that it's going to be rolled over because the virus isn't going anywhere. You know, it's not disappearing. Um, it's likely to be here forever. So are we going to continue to have these things forever? I mean, ultimately, I mean, it, it, well, it, we have more comfort if the government would actually say what the rules are. I mean, the government did state a rule uh, at the end of 2021, which was when the vaccine was made available to every person who wanted one. Well, we're past that now. Um, since then, I haven't heard any definitive statement of any rule by which the government will decide that no more powers are required. <clears throat> it's, it's probably a big leap to just go, no more powers. Um, in terms of civil liberties, uh, as I understand it, the, the case that you're putting is that everyone should be free to make their own choice. But um, uh, I guess what what would you contend is fair in terms of the broader general public when perhaps some people are making bad choices that impact on um, the freedoms of others? There are vaccines which people can take. Uh, which are highly effective at preventing uh, illness. And there are other alternative treatments, as I've mentioned in the thing. Um, people are entitled to wear masks to protect themselves. But this, this is an infectious uh, virus, which is everywhere in the community now. Mm. Um, it's in the sense that it's everywhere in the community now, it's no more different than the flu circulating in the community. I'm not suggesting that COVID is... Uh, 
as the same as the flu. I mean, I, I get the debate about that confuses me, but anyway, let's presume for a moment that it's, it's worse than the flu, but still, the flu is everywhere. There are all sorts of viruses floating around the community. I mean, uh, for example, uh, you know, lots of people die in, old, in, in aged care homes from the common cold. Um, so the community ha has, in a large part, done what it what it's obliged to do to protect other people, which is we have developed extremely effective vaccines, which people can take. We've taken other treatments. Other treatments are coming down the track. Uh, you read the reviews, which suggest that more antivirals, highly effective ones, are uh, being made by all these people who are spending lots of money doing that. Uh, and to the extent that uh, you don't gain protection from those things, you can continue to wear a mask and take other steps. I mean, I accept at the end of the day these things are, 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 are judgment calls um, about what is the relationship between individual liberty and, and, and how, how do people, individual, individual rights interact. But where you've got to a point now, which I've just described, where you've got all those treatments, you've got all those methodologies, uh, the community has been through a long period of lockdown and, and not being able to go anywhere and all of those things, which were designed to achieve this result. Don't forget that. That's what the purpose of them was. The purpose of them was to get to this position. And now we want to carry them on, despite the fact we've now reached the position, which was the articulated aim of them. Um, so my answer to that is that we've achieved a position where, uh, through the magic of, and brilliance of science, uh, that we have, a, and through great sacrifice for two years, we've achieved the result where there is an appropriate balance between the various interests of various people in the community, and the people can, uh, as I say, protect themselves still by wearing a mask if that's what they want to do. Thank you. We have a question from the member for Morani. Oh, thank you, Chair. And uh, so sorry I could come here to see you in person, Mr. Cope, for a refreshing view on the whole situation. And um, it's important not to get too involved in groupthink. I think you know, you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, just quickly, um, about the unelected officials I spoke earlier about and the way uh, they will be running the show rather than, you know, coming back into the parliament or legislative assembly having their, uh, the last say in some of this. What's your thoughts on that? And also, um, mandates, have we gone far enough in this legislation to look at mandates and um, rescinding or repealing some of these mandates? So, you now people that have um, antibodies and have had COVID, they can demonstrate they've got antibodies that they can go back to work and, you know, form a, a helpful part of society. Well, the effect of the, these laws will be um, to end the current mandate because all those will expire on the 31st of October. So that's why we say that it's a, a major step forward. Um, so I'm not. So I'm, I don't see your concern about that in terms of continuing rules about. Uh, vaccination requirements and whether um, infection should be treated as a substitute. Um, well, as I say, our position is we don't... Whatever arguments you may have been able to make about vaccine mandates 18 months ago, uh, they don't make any sense to us anymore and there shouldn't be any more of them. Um, as to the question of substitute immunity, well, that, that really is a highly scientific question and I, I will allow that to somebody else, the Chief Health Officer, to decide. Um, I think there was a third point, but I've, I think that was it. Uh, okay. well, I'll let him come back if we've got a supplementary member for Lytton. You've got a question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for coming in, uh, Mr. I appreciate um, your submission. If you're not comfortable with what's coming in at this particular point in time with the sunset clause in October 2023, what do you think would be appropriate in its place? Well, our answer is that there should be nothing. Um, but if there is to be something, it should be the subject of the further things that we mention in our submission. Points which we have been making on a number of occasions about a right of review, that, that, that these directions should be made by the Minister that people who are subject to detention should be subject to a right of review. But the Parliament should confirm that you can actually challenge these decisions under the, the decision to ex ex issue these directions under the Human Rights Act. And 
given our view that we don't think these things are necessary, uh, people who uh, lose money as a result of them should be compensated for it. Okay. So, with regards to the um, the the current piece of uh, the current guidelines that are in place, the uh -huh. health directives that are in place, where the chief health officer has that capacity to um, make those directions. Do you? So you think you've got, you've made it very clear that you feel that that's an overstepping of his position or that position of the CHO? Uh, well, our position was that all the chief health officer's powers should have gone the last time they were extended. In fact, our position was they should have gone on the 31st of December last year. Okay. So we, um, the, the chief health officer today spoke about um, the big wave that came through, the Omicron, Omicron wave that came through with the peaked in July. And um, we had to respond to a completely new variant. At this particular point in time, we don't know what variants might be, as the Chief Health Officer has said that. So does your organisation know what, what's, what's coming? Uh, no, and as has been pointed out in the previous submission, if you have a variant which is demonstrated to actually get around the, the vaccines, then that would justify some return to some sort of emergency powers. But our position is, but the government is required to justify that at the time. And I mean, if that is the situation, then more than likely the current powers are not necessary. Oh, sorry, would not be sufficient. But, you know, we can't have a situation where, um, sorry, emergency powers need to be justified on every occasion that they're used. Um, so if the, if the parliament, if the government says, oh, there's another variant, and I mean, there are so many out there and lots of them, you know, are, are said to be the next devil variant and they're, they're not so far. But anyway, of course, I anticipate the possibility that might be such a thing. Well, then the government needs to turn up and say to the public, uh, here is the scientific evidence which says that this um, will escape the immunity which is generated by the vaccines. And of course, there's a big debate about that, about whether um, um, neutralising antibodies is a, a clear indication of of immunity as opposed to T cells, and there's all that debate. You can read Paul Offit, who's an advisor to the Federal Drug, Food and Drug Administration in the United States, all about that. Um, but anyway, if, if the government, but if the government says that's the position, then they need to stand up and say that. They need to demonstrate that, and then they need to say why the particular powers that they want are justified, and they pass them through to Parliament. Mm. So. Um I guess that's one of the reasons why there's a statement of justification already that's, that's with the um, legislation. One of the points of having these three steps that are only um, that the Chief Health Officer can actually um, in, introduce is it can be done in a speedy and appropriate fashion if, if for serious reasons. So by delaying that capacity and having to reintroduce legislation into the House, having a debate in Parliament, mm -hmm. what is the likely impact to the community? Well, um, in an emergency situation, the Parliament should be able to attend to these matters in an urgent fashion. I mean, last in 2020, the whole place was closed down in our view, you know, for entirely unjustified reasons, because it all could have been done on Zoom or something or other. So um, I don't accept that Parliament cannot act with speed if necessary. Uh, we are not facing that situation at the moment. But you, you, the whole premise of your question just assumes that the, that the Parliament can just continue to roll on this emergency forever, and it can't. When does it finish? My question to you is, what is your criteria as to when it finishes? Well, we're actually asking you questions. I know, but, but you're the committee. <laughs> so, uh, you should be asking ha, ha, the government that question. Have you, have you read the bill to see yes, what it I've actually is? So it, it actually expires as a twilight clause in yes, 2023. Yes, why shouldn't it expire now? So what my question to you is then is with respect to um, those comments that you made about how quickly those countries were able to respond and act, we also had to respond and act really mm -hmm. quickly here in Australia. Mm -hmm. And much of the reason as to why we were able to respond and, and act so quickly was due to the, the, um, 
the health directives that were in place by the CHO. So by the removal of any of those, again, I put my question to you, is how many people are going to die from something that we don't know may or may not come? Uh, well, first of all, of course, the Chief Officer didn't have those opinion, powers un until they were introduced by this Parliament. I'll allow a bit of latitude. Thanks, Member for Moroni. But they, the Chief Officer, those powers not in the Public Health Act before whenever they were introduced in 2020. So the Parliament did react and they produced the powers. So I don't... Uh, so that's what happened last time. Surely it could be happened again. All right. We'll and as I say, it's for the Parliament to justify having an emergency. It's not for the public to uh, justify it. It's for the Parliament, the government. We'll get a final question from the member for Bundaberg. Final question? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chair. And Mr Cope, thank you for coming in. Um, how does COVID-19 formulate, mutate and infect the human body? I'm uh, not a medical practitioner. Not a medical practitioner, thank you. Not a medical you. practitioner. Chair, one very quick one. Yeah. Uh, to enter this place as a dress code required, is that an attack on civil liberties? Sorry? To enter this place as a dress code required, is that an attack on civil liberties? No, really not really uh, relevant, member. No, it's not. Thank you.